I'm challenging you right now. If you if you show me one time in the Bible, Jesus is God, I'll believe you. Here's the Bible, show me. Your kids are looking at you. He's not asking, show us where Jesus said he's God. Show us in the Bible where Jesus is God. Yep. Now, the way he formulated the question, because again, he's not very intelligent. Show me where Jesus is God in the Bible. That can mean show you where Jesus is described in such a way that would only make sense if he's God. Things are said about Jesus, and characteristics are ascribed to Jesus, functions are ascribed to Jesus that can only be true of God. Or it can mean, show me where the word God is attributed to Jesus. You see, because he's not that intelligent, he doesn't know how to formulate his objection. His wording can mean, show me where the Bible calls Jesus God, G-O-D, or show me where the Bible describes Jesus as being God. It's also important to know what version of the Bible he's reading. My assumption is... King James. King James, good. All right. Yep. That's what I, I looked that up as well, brother. I, I made sure to watch the whole thing. And he also makes the claim that King James, and I know you're going to laugh, corrupted mm -hmm. the Bible. Okay, good. But that's what he uses, right? Yep. Because one thing I want to teach everyone here, always use the Bible version that your interlocutor is using. Since Amen. he goes with the King James, let me show you. Where does the King James attribute the word God to Jesus? God to Jesus. All right. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God, blessed forever. Amen. So who, who is Jesus? God, blessed forever. Okay, that's one. Now let's go to Acts 20, 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you, hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. God has blood? Sounds well, to me like that must be talking about Christ. Of course, because Jesus is the God man. Now notice the hypostatic union. One eternal divine person who, because he took on the nature of man, is also truly human and has a physical body. And as a man, he shed his human blood to purchase his church. God purchased the church by his own blood. This is the two-natured person. One person, two natures. The eternal divine person. He's not a human person. He's an eternal divine person that took on the being of humanity. Right? So anyway, that's one. That's another. All right. Let's go to John 20, 28. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. There's no way you can tap dance around the grammar. Now, if he wants to go to the original languages, he'll get buried because the Greek is explicit. But yep. even here, said unto him, these words are said unto him, my Lord and my God. Now, as far as the Hebrew Bible is concerned, an Israelite, a monotheistic Jew, cannot have any other Lord and God besides Yahweh. Just to further reinforce that Thomas is saying these words to Jesus, right? I want you to see the parallel. Let's go to John 20, 27. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. I want you to see the parallel. It says, then saith he to Thomas. No one's going to deny that Jesus said these things to Thomas. Then it says, and Thomas answered unto him, my Lord, my God. Then in 29, J Jesus saith unto him. You see, just like Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas said to Jesus. Jesus is speaking to Thomas. Thomas is speaking to Jesus. And what does he say to Jesus? You, Jesus, are my Lord and my God. You can't get around it grammatically. First Timothy 3, 16, the King James. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God was manifest in the flesh. So who appeared in the flesh? Not some creature, but God. There you go. So where does the Bible say Jesus is God? Well, here, if you mean the word theos, the final one, Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 9, but we're going to unpack that one. Go to Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 9. But under the sun, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of the, thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. 
Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, be, here in verse 8, God the Father is speaking to the Son. And he addresses the Son and glorifies the Son and praises the Son as the God who reigns forever. Now, you don't see it in your English, but actually in the Greek, it's ha theos, thy throne, the God. So God the Father glorifies, praises, magnifies his Son and calls his Son ha theos, the God, which in Arabic is el ilah. In Arabic, if I render ha theos in Arabic, it would be el ilah. And so when the that Christian told him, Jesus is ilah, the Arabic word for deity, go show me. Well, right there. He is ha theos in Arabic, el ilah. But here's where it's going to get astonishing. So God the Father glorifies, magnifies, praises his son as ha theos, the God, not simply as a God. Now, here's what's interesting. Those of you who speak Arabic, Arabic speakers who read Arabic, you know how the Arabic of Hebrews 1.8 is translated? It has God saying to Jesus in Arabic, your throne, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. He's called Allah in the Arabic Bible. So Jesus is Allah. But now it gets a little worse for our friend. It gets a little worse for our friend. Now go back. I want you to read Hebrews 1, 8 to 9 again to see so that no one denies that it's the Father speaking to the Son and about the Son. Amen. But to, unto the Son, unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So make sure he or anyone else sees it's the father talking to the son about the son. The subject object do not change. The subject is the son. The father speaking to the son about the son. Because then in verse 10, the conversation continues and the father goes on to say to the son and about the son. Notice what the father says about the son and to the son in verses 10 to 12. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth. And the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Okay, so here God, notice, guys, be blown away. If God the Father Almighty glorifies, praises, magnifies Jesus as the eternal, eternally reigning God, and as the Lord who created the heavens and the earth, who remains unchangeable, unlike creation, that he rolls up and changes. This is what the Father thinks of the Son and says to the Son. He says to the Son, you are the Lord who at the beginning, this is an echo of the creation account of Genesis. God the Father said that at the beginning, meaning Genesis in the beginning, it was you, my Son. You were that very Lord who created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. You are that very Lord who laid the foundations of the earth and made the heavens by your own hands. You are that Lord that rolls them up because you oversee and sustain creation. And unlike creation, you are unchangeable. That's who you are, my son. The unchangeable, eternal creator, sustainer of all creation, the very Lord of heaven and earth, and the eternally reigning God. So you mean to tell me, brother, from the very Bible that he's waving at people to show him that Christ is God from, that yeah. we can show him clearly. Yep. And then he's going to tell you, well, these passages are corrupt. We don't know who wrote Paul. But wait, that wasn't your challenge. You just said show you from the Bible. So if you then say, my Bible's corrupt, you prove my point. My Bible does, does teach the Trinity and Jesus is God Almighty, and you can't refute it. So now you have to attack its integrity. 